During my time in the United Arab Emirates, I stayed for two months at the sustainable city in Dubai. A 5 million square foot residential area designed to be net neutral and even has the potential to go off the grid. I spoke with Karim about how this idea came off the ground, the various social, economical and environmental aspects of the city, the challenges they faced and of course electric cars. The sustainable city is a net zero energy development. This is the overall goal that we have, which is to produce sufficient electricity from solar panels to satisfy all the demand inside the city. And so we've achieved that using a combination of, of passive features and active design features. Uh, and what you have noticed in the last couple of weeks is that the city orientation is interesting because all the villas, the villas are pointing north and that is because we want to maximize the shade and we want to avoid the sun. And this is really, really important in this part of the world because it can get very hot in the summer. Uh, 45 degrees plus for about two, three months. And so we really have to avoid the sun as much as possible. And then the villas are extremely well insulated and this is how we achieve, this is how we first of all uh, manage the demand. You know, this is called demand side management. And then with the balance of energy requirement needed, we satisfy that with the solar panels that we have right here on the rooftops of the villas. Well, the vision is uh, to bring down our carbon footprints. For us, yes, we are a property developer and globally, you know, we account for a lot of the emissions because cement and steel are among the biggest uh, um, uh, producers, emitters of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. And so we're very conscious of that and we want to be, we wanted to build a model city in Dubai, which is future ready, which means we are uh, ready for any climate change and climate change uh, impacts on the environment, on rainfall, on heat, on temperature, etc. So we want it to be future ready and we, want it, we also want to be climate friendly, which means we have to bring down our carbon footprint as much as possible. We're not, neutral, we're not carbon neutral yet. Zero net energy is different from carbon neutral. Zero net energy means we produce as much as we consume but we still have emissions coming from the cars, we have emissions that went into the construction material, uh, the construction phase, and so on and so forth. So the next challenge, which is still a few years away, is to be carbon neutral, in which case, or in that case, you have to really absorb all the emissions that you have emitted, or compensate for it, offset all the emissions. So are you taking this achievable? It is achievable, but we still have some, uh, we still have some technical hurdles and challenges. So, but to, to achieve that, this is how we're approaching it. We have, uh, we have six verticals, six topics, and uh, environmental topics and, uh, and environmental uh, strategies and, and, and themes in the city. So we talked about energy. Water is another one. Water holds a lot of energy because it comes from the power sector in Dubai. It's from desalination. So we need to also bring down our water consumption and we have to recycle all the water that enters the city, which we have achieved so far. On the waste side, we also have to reduce our waste generation and recycle and sort as much as possible because this also has a carbon uh, impact when you transport it to facilities and then whether you landfill it or you burn it or you recycle it, you have uh, carbon emissions all along as well. And then you have construction material that we mentioned. Another, uh, another angle, another vertical that we have in the city is mobility and mobility transportation. Uh, accounts for at least 40% of emissions in Dubai and 20% of emissions globally. So what can we do to bring down emissions from moving, from commuting from A to B? Uh, so we have a, uh, a two-pronged approach. One is uh, within the city. Within the city we have developed, through the urban plan, we have developed vehicle-free clusters. So for every 100 villas there are no cars between them inside of that area. So we have five clusters of 100, those are vehicle free. All the cars, they park in the parking area. And if you have to commute within the city from the parking to the villa or from the villa to the mixed use area, you have access to communal buggies. So instead of having a private buggy, there is a, a community owned buggy, which is parked outside and you can activate it with a, uh, with a card. And uh, those are solar charged, solar powered. So that's, that's clean. We also have a bicycle course uh, all around the city. We have a jogging tracks all around the city and then we have a horse track. So there are so many ways of moving around with, within the city, within the perimeter of the city without using a car. So uh, water, we have one meter, so we have one inlet, one pipe which leads into the city and this comes from, this is desalinated water. So it's extremely precious. It's sweet water, but it comes from the sea. So there was a lot of energy invested to produce it. 
to desalinate and then to transport the water to us. Which means we have to do everything we can to make best use of it. So the water inside the villas, after use, it is split into two streams. We have a grey water stream and a black water stream. The grey water comes from the shower and the wash basin and the washing machine and everything else is black water. So we separate those. We, have, we can actually see that from the manholes in the garden. You have multiple manholes, so these are the different waste uh, water streams. And they go separate ways in the city. We actually uh, treat the grey water below ground uh, near one of the biodomes and the grey water is then pumped. Uh, it is stored in a storage lake, it is pumped to the upper lake and then it is used to irrigate the uh, productive landscape along the farm, which is what we see here behind us. The black water is treated in a separate uh, facility just behind the fence and that water is used to irrigate the perimeter, about 3,000 trees all around the city. So all the water that enters the city stays in the city, that's what we say. And when it does rain, we only get this much rain per year, which is about 70 millimeters of, of rainfall, which is very little. But you can, we can get flash floods, you know, this can be quite intense if it falls in one or two rainfall events. So when it does rain, the topography of the city is, is such that we're able to capture all the rainfall through, we have bioswales along the, the ring road, which are like trenches along the date palms and we have little openings so that any stagnant water is diverted to those bioswales and it, is, it just helps recharge the groundwater, the shallow groundwater or it is channeled to the middle stream which runs along the farm. So stormwater is something we also keep, we don't give it away, we don't have a stormwater system, we just need to divert it and let it soak and, uh, and recharge the, uh, the groundwater. And on the waste side, when people move into the city, we have sorting bins provided in all the villas. So we have five bins, which are your typical recyclables, plastics and, and paper and cardboard and metals and other waste. And then uh, homeowners or and tenants, they need to carry their waste out to the nearest uh, recycling station or sorting station outside. So outside we have, for every 100 villas, we have 13 stations and every station has five bins. And then we have electric cars actually circulating inside the villas to collect uh, the waste and they are taken to a recycling facility which is called uh, Tadwir, which is also operated by a sister company. So we can trace the waste from, from source to, uh, to sink. And so the, the farm, the farm is, is really uh, uh, one of the six pillars of uh, environmental sustainability for us inside the city. And so as you see, we have a farm extending the length of the city, about one kilometer, and we have these biodomes. So contrary to Europe, uh, the purpose of these biodomes is to keep the heat out again, right? As opposed to keep the heat inside. In summer, when it's 45 degrees, we can actually drop lower the temperature to about 30 degrees inside the biodomes. And what we grow inside these biodomes uh, are herbs. We have 40 kinds of herbs, uh, basil, chicory, uh, chives, uh, cherry tomatoes. Uh, we also have lettuce, uh, spinach, uh, rocca, parsley, uh, mint, and so on and so forth. And now we started uh, producing vegetables as well. So we have vegetables inside the biodomes, but we can also benefit from about seven months of the year, we can grow vegetables outside the biodomes when the weather permits. But then when the temperature increases too much towards the end of April, then we move everything, we shift production to inside the biodomes exclusively. So we do have challenges uh, related to, uh, first of all, uh, policy issues. And uh, Dubai is a place where you know the right but there is a vision you know behind the growth the future green growth of dubai and, uh, and then we have a, a string of policies and from the policies you have regulations so we were the first uh, property developer to to benefit and to apply to implement a regulation which allows to install solar rooftop panels for uh, resi the residential sector and um, so that's on the policy side but then we had also issues with approvals and NOCs you know all the equipment has to be pre-approved uh, pre by, by DIWA by the authority which is a precautionary measure and then we had, uh, we had to overcome a lot of skepticism by people by buyers and investors uh, people until today they still frown and, they, and they, they doubt you know they're skeptical about can you achieve it or not but now, now we know as because we're now entering the second year of operation, so we have about six months of data so far, but we need more data to complete the full year. And uh, in winter, when cooling drops a lot because the weather is pleasant, uh, we now have most villas actually paying close to nothing in electricity charges per month. Uh, three dirham, ten dirham, that's equ equivalent of two, three, four, five euros per month. And that is because what they consume is satisfied by how much they produce on their rooftops. Number two is promoting electric vehicles. And uh, 
which is a great topic, which is uh, a topic of the future. And, uh, and again, this city is electric vehicle ready, meaning uh, we have already provided five substations and we intend to install additional substations in the future as a need arises. We also have provided a subsidy to all villa owners. So anybody investing in the city as part of their sales contract, they can access, they have access uh, to 40,000 dirham in subsidy towards the purchase of their first electric vehicle. So if a family moves into the city and they have two cars, if they decide to replace one of the two cars and buy an electric vehicle, they can um, receive up to 40,000 dirham, which is 10,000 euros, which is more than what you get in tax rebates, etc. in the states at state and federal level. And the concept, this is what we call our DNA. We, here we apply social, economic and environmental sustainability practices. So we, it's not only about energy. Energy is a big part of the equation, but it's not everything. There's a whole social dimension to the city. There is an economic viability dimension. This, as, as an example, people who live in the city, they don't pay service fees and they don't pay maintenance fees. This is covered by the revenues which comes from the mixed use area. So this is a unique formula again to make it affordable because uh, it is well known if you live in Dubai, you end up paying a lot, incurring a lot of fees uh, from developers, property developers, facility management. So we, we've developed a different system here in the city. This, this brings me back 20 years uh, when I was studying environmental sciences and this was a whole course on how do you define sustainability. And so there's an academic definition to sustainability. But I think uh, our understanding of sustainability has grown. Uh, it has to, uh, certainly it has to cover social, economic and environmental aspects. That's, that's for one. Those are inseparable. You cannot just address the environment without the social. You cannot address happiness and well-being without, without the economics of it. So those three have to come together. And then, because of climate change, which is something we didn't really understand 20, 20 years ago, I think sustainability is very much, has, must focus on, uh, first of all, slowing down climate change and eventually reversing climate change. Otherwise, anything we do is not sustainable. So sustainability is about bringing down our carbon footprints and achieving social, uh, economic and environmental comfort. If you have been enjoying this interview, check out one of the many more videos I made of sustainable initiatives I visited during the journey and subscribe to this channel to stay updated about future ones.